Hey, should you use take until destroyed with an HTTP put, post, or delete? The short answer is probably not. Why? Let's take a look. The take until destroyed operator was introduced in Angular version 16. It automatically unsubscribes from an observable when its component or service is destroyed. This prevents potential memory leaks and doesn't require a manual unsubscribe. I covered this useful operator in detail in my prior video, Use Take Until Destroyed to Unsubscribe from Angular's Observables. The video is linked above and in this video's notes. But in that video, we didn't cover the case of put, post, or delete. Let's walk through a put operation with this sample application. I'm in StackBlitz. This simple sample application has two tabs. The Tasks tab lists our to-do items and is implemented with the to-do list component. With the Update Tasks tab, we can change the status of our to-dos. It's implemented with the to-do update component. In either case, selecting one tab destroys the component used by the other tab. So clicking on Tasks displays the to-do list component and destroys the to-do update component. The state service holds our state as signals. Our state includes our to-dos and any error message presented to the user. It's provided in root, so any part of the application can access this state. The to-do service gets and puts our to-dos. Notice that it is not provided in the root of the application. Rather, we register it using the component providers. For example, here is our to-do list component, and here we register the to-do service in its providers array. The service is then instantiated when the component is initialized and destroyed when the component is destroyed. To see when that happens, I added ng on destroy and display a message when this component is destroyed. Our to-do update component is similar. Here is the provider's array, and here is the ng on destroy. Going back to the to-do service, this service is then destroyed when its associated component is destroyed. That way we'll be able to see the ramifications of take until destroyed. In the constructor, if our to-do state is empty, we get the to-dos. We use take until destroyed here. That way the retrieve request is canceled if the user leaves this feature before the data is retrieved. I use the ng-on-destroy method of the service to log out when the service is destroyed. Scrolling down, here is our change status method. This method is called when the user clicks one of the checkboxes. It updates the status of the task based on the value of the checkbox. Then it issues an HTTP put request to update the to-do in our database. For now, it also uses take until destroyed. In this case, we pass in the destroy ref. This is required because the take until destroyed isn't in an injection context. See my prior video, Angular Injection Context Explained, for more information on injection context. As part of this subscribe, when the put observable emits, we call the update state method. This method creates a new to-do array from a copy of the to-do state and replaces the one updated to-do task. Then we set this new array into our state signal. By creating a new array, we ensure that the signal value is changed. On error, we set our error message state, and on complete of the observable, we display a message. We could update our internal state first, then issue the put request, but by issuing the put request first, we ensure the data was saved before modifying our internal state. Let's open the browser console so we can see our messages. I'll click the Refresh button to reload the application. Note that I'm using an in-memory database. That means that every time we refresh the application, it reloads our initial data. We see the Get is Complete message. In the preview window, we see our initial data. I'll click the Update Tasks button, and we see our destroyed messages. The to-do service is destroyed when the component is destroyed because it's registered as part of the component's providers. 
Back in the preview window, I'll update one of our tasks. I'll mark this one as complete. We see a Put as Complete message in the console. Next, click the Tasks tab. The To Do Update component is destroyed, which destroys its instance of the To Do service. Our internal To Do state was correctly updated as we now see two tasks complete. So far, so good. Let's try it again. I'll click Update Tasks. Our To Do List component and its registered To Do service instance are destroyed. This time, I'll click on the first checkbox and very quickly click on Tasks to destroy the To Do Update component. Yikes! The task I modified wasn't updated. Our internal data wasn't changed. What happened? In the console, we see that the to-do update component and its registered to-do service instance are destroyed. Then the put is complete. Looking at the code, as is its purpose, our take until destroyed completes the observable when the component is destroyed. So we see the complete message, but the observable never emitted, so our next function never had a chance to execute and update our state. Let's add a few more logging statements. I'll paste them in. This one displays when the put emits, and this one after the take until destroyed. Note that these changes cause our code to recompile and our in-memory database to return to its initial state. Now let's try the application again. Click on Update Tasks, and we see the to-do list component and its service instance are destroyed. I'll update one of the tasks. We see the put emitted message, the after take until destroyed, and the put is complete. Let's do it again. This time I'll click a checkbox and quickly click Tasks to destroy the to do update component. We see the component and its service instance are destroyed. And we see the put is complete message. We don't see any of the other logging. The take until destroyed operator completed the put observable when the component was destroyed and before it had a chance to emit, so our internal state was never updated. That is not what most users would expect. In most cases, if a user updates something or clicks a Save button and then quickly navigates away, they expect that update operation to complete successfully. How do we fix this? Remove the take until destroyed. I'll delete it and the second tap operator. Our in-memory database is again returned to its initial state, and we can try again. I'll select Update Tasks, click a checkbox, and quickly click the Tasks button. Notice in the console that our to-do update component and its service instance are destroyed, but the put observable still emits before it completes. And looking at our to-do list in the preview window, we see that the internal state was updated. It worked! I'll close the console. So, use Take Until Destroyed to unsubscribe from long-running operations, such as a timer or a subject. This prevents potential memory leaks. Consider using Take Until Destroyed when issuing an HTTP GET request to cancel the operation if the user navigates away. And avoid Take Until Destroyed on Put, Post, or Delete operations. Because they are one-and-done operations, you don't have to worry about memory leaks. And unlike retrieve operations, the user most likely doesn't want to cancel the operation when navigating away. Thanks for watching, and if this content was useful, please like and subscribe.